Good evening, good evening, good evening, Victory Word. Good evening, Victory Word. Welcome to your Wednesday night Bible study. I'm glad for us all to be here tonight, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's our virtual Bible study, and we're glad to be here tonight. But before we get started, let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you first and foremost, Lord, for this opportunity once again to fellowship and to have Bible study with the Victory Word Church. Lord, we thank you because not only are you our God, you are our Father. And for that, we just say thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We magnify, we glorify you, Lord. For this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you because you've brought us from a mighty long way and you've done so much for us, Lord. And we thank you for all the blessings bestowed upon us. So tonight, Lord, I ask you to fall fresh in this Bible study. Allow your Holy Spirit to, to fall in this house tonight, the Victory Word Church. That is my prayer, Lord. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and praise God. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone tonight. Good to see you. And Lord, we just we just we just happy. Even though we're still in this pandemic season, we're still happy. We're still thankful and we're still rejoicing because God is God. Amen. Uh before we get started tonight, I said I sent out some messages to to uh, my to Victory Word family, and to those that I send our daily devotion to. And it reaches about 300 people. And I sent out uh, the information tonight saying, if you had any questions that you wanted to ask myself or Pastor T, or anything, just general questions uh, before we got started in Bible study, that would give others time to, to come and join. And so I got a few uh responses back. And so I'm going to uh, answer a few of these questions before we get started. Amen. And one question was, what time do you get up to pray, Pastor? And usually my prayer time before I send out my morning devotion is usually about 5 a.m. I get up at about 5 until about 5.30 and I go through my prayer, my own personal prayer with God, being thanking, thanking him for just taking care of me through the night, taking care of my family, loved ones, the Victory Word Church, and all those that are connected to us. So that's usually the time that I get up for my daily devotion with God. Amen. Uh, another question is, how are your children handling this pandemic? And I talk to all of them at least once a week. The youngest, my youngest son, Mark Jalen, he's home with us. So I don't have to go far. He's well. Uh, Michael Jr., he has his own apartment in Mount Pleasant. So we have to call and check on him. He's doing well. And my daughter, Janelle, she's doing well. And I also talked to my son, Malcolm, a couple of weeks ago. He's doing well. So all the, the my immediate family is well. My mother and father are doing pretty good. Talk to them every other day just to make sure that they're well. And so our family, my immediate family, they're all doing pretty good. So we thank God for that. And as you all know, uh, AP, he's doing well. He's working with, you know, his job. So I'm not going to go into that. But he, him and his family are doing well. And we thank God for that. Uh, what else? One question was, uh, Pastor, have you lost any loved ones during this season? And yes, I have. Yes, I have. Uh, some real close people to me have passed. And and it definitely takes a toll on you emotionally. But even in this season, we have to trust God. And, it, and it's all right to have tears in your eyes because that's a part of the release. And all of us, if we don't know someone personally, someone close to us knows someone that has had has died because of this. And so, and guess what? Uh, there's still other disorders going on outside of this C-19. Um, people still have other issues 
And so we have to continue to be on the wall praying for those that are having other issues other than just COVID-19. Uh, what other questions was there? Oh, one question that was really uh, touching to me. Someone asked, say, Pastor, during this period, do you ever cry? And for those that know me, know that it doesn't take much for me to cry. And so emotionally, yes, I've shed a lot of tears over these last uh, seven weeks. Um, Some days it, it gets heavy when I think about it. And so I have to be very careful on where I allow my thoughts to go. I cannot allow my emotions to over over overrun me to the point where I just go down in cyclops and ashes. So every time I wake up, it, it's another good day. And my pastor, he always tells me when we talk, he said, Mike, it's another good day. And it is. It's another good day. No matter, despite my challenges, despite my feelings, despite my emotions, it's still a good day. And so we just have to keep on pushing and pressing and going after our blessing. Amen. But yes, pastor does cry. Uh, someone asked me, what is my favorite TV show? And I really didn't have a favorite one until, until we got into this situation. So I've been watching uh, emphatically Chicago PD. Oh, I love that. That police show is, I love it. Boy, uh, Sergeant Voigt, that's my guy. You know, I, I I like his leadership and the way that he protects his officers. And I just love the storyline. The, the writing is excellent. Characters are excellent. And I enjoy that very much. Amen. So those are, those are the questions for tonight. So I just thought I would share that, show the soft side of me, I guess, or the family side and and we'll do that again next week. If you have some questions, you just text me your uh, your question, and I'll read it. I won't even mention your name, so you'll have some. You, you won't have to worry about who uh, is anybody uh, worried about who knew the question that was asked. And so we're going to go ahead and get into our our subject for tonight, and. Our subject for tonight is choices and consequences. Choices and consequences. Consequences. And our our text is coming from Deuteronomy, the thirtieth chapter, starting at the eleventh verse, the eleventh through the twentieth verses. And I'm reading from the New International Version, and it reads, "Now." What I am commanding you to today is not too difficult or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, no. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commandments, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice 
and hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. So to give you some context to the text, this is the Lord God of Israel speaking to the children of Israel as they are leaving Egypt, going to the promised land. And he said, I set before you life and good, death and evil. He wants you to make a choice. And he, he said, if you did certain things, this would happen. So I'm talking about consequences and choices tonight. The Israelites back in those days had choices. And we as believers in this generation have choices to make. Some choices are harder than others, but they are necessary. And so tonight, it's choice, not chance, that determines your destiny. That quote is by Jean Nidech. I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm, I'm tearing her name up, but that's not my quote. But she said, it's, not, it's choice, not chance, that determines your destiny. We sometimes forget how the choices we make carve out particular paths in our lives. Our first trip down a particular direction following a choice we make can be brand new, innovative, and an exciting direction. If it's a choice of long-standing habit, it can be an old rut in the road. So what path do you prefer? Would you like to have a new direction? What would it look like and how would it feel? If you can describe it in writing, it will become so real you'll begin to live it, to walk the path of your choice. But I have a question. Do all paths have rocks? There's no such thing as a perfectly smooth path. Maybe you've noticed how those rocky spots in life's paths are the things that strengthen your character. You would get bored if the path didn't have a few rocks in it, but if there seems to be too many rocks, it might be wise to do an assessment. And I'm here to tell you tonight, watch out for falling rocks. Be careful. There's choices that we have to make. Over these last seven weeks, we've had to make choices. Do I stay in? Do I go out? When do I go out? Uh, uh, where do I go? Do I pay attention to the stay home, stay safe? Do I do what I feel like doing in my spirit because I'm getting antsy? I'm tired of being in the house. Uh, th th there's choices that all of us have to make. But I'm here to tell you tonight, there's consequences to those choices. So choose your, your counsel, company, and companions wisely. Beware seeking wise words of advice from a fool or expecting informed opinions or decisions from the ignorant. I'll say it again. Beware seeking wise words of advice from a fool or expecting informed opinions or decisions, decisions from the ignorant. Once you get the words that attempt to damage you and they reveal the true heart of the individual, never allow them to regain entrance to you. Don't allow, don't seek counsel from crazy people. That, that's the easy way to say it. Don't, don't look for answers from someone who don't even know the questions. There, there are some, there's consequences to, to what we, to our actions, to our deeds. Uh, during, this, during this season right now, uh, a lot of people making some bad choices because the weather is nice, because of this or that and the other, or because I've heard people say that they would rather die in their freedom and have freedom to do what they want to do than to stay in and, and, and have their rights taken away. And that is the most foolish thing I've ever heard. Why would you put yourself in danger 
And why would you endanger other people? Now, I'm not talking about people that's, that have jobs or c- companies and and, they're, and they need people in order for their company to thrive. I'm not talking about those people. I understand their plight. I understand that they need people to to for their business. Some people are going to lose their businesses because of this. My heart goes out for them. And, and I understand that situation. I, I'm not in that, but but I can I, I can feel for them. But those are not the people I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people that just decide to have a hundred uh, folks together gathering, no mask, um, no no uh, no thought or compassion towards their neighbor, and it's amazing. And and don't get me wrong, sisters and brothers, this is not just in our community. This is across the country, black, white. It do, it doesn't matter. I've seen it on both sides of the of the pendulum. So all I'm saying is that there's consequences to those decisions. There's consequences. Everybody, yes, we want to go back out, but but the but the scripture here that God was was letting the Israelites know. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. When you have something else leading you outside of God, you put yourself in a position to be destroyed. That's right. You have to be careful. We have to use wisdom. We can't just use we can't just go on our feelings, how we feel. There, there's, there's, there's so much that we have to be uh, prepared for, to be conditioned for right now. We can't just make moves because we want to move. No, you have to take your time. You got to, we have to pray. Lord, is this what you want me to do? Is this going to be is this going to be good for others? Not just myself. In this season we have to learn that it's not just about us. We have to love our neighbor as ourselves. The Bible says love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. He said this is the first commandment and the second is like namely this, love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what Jesus said. Love thy neighbor as thyself. In other words, think about somebody else but yourself. Think about someone else. How is it going to affect them? I'm going to the grocery store. Got my mask on. Got my gloves on. It's people walking around. No masks, no gloves, no nothing. And, de- and, 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 the, and the death rate is steadily climbing, steadily climbing, steadily climbing. And I'm here to tell you that this uh, pandemic, uh, th- this is going to be with us for a long time. Even after, the, after, even after they allow us to go back to our jobs and school, and there's going to be a new way of doing business that we gonna, that we are going to have to look right in the eye, and we're going to have to get with the program. And when I say get with the program, I'm not talking about government programs. I'm talking about being able to know what to do in the situation. Amen. Nothing limits intelligence more than ignorance. I'll say that again. Nothing limits intelligence more than ignorance. Nothing fosters ignorance more than one one's own opinions. Nothing strengthens opinions more than refusing to look at reality. I'll say that whole piece again. Nothing limits intelligence more than ignorance. Nothing fosters ignorance more than one's own opinions and nothing strengthens opinions more than refusing to look at reality. I got that quote from Dr. Robbie C. Peters, Apostle Peters. Refusing to look at the reality. 
The reality is right now, stay home. That's the reality. And stop listening to other people who don't know what, they, what they're talking about. There's a lot of folks saying what should be and how the governor should do this and how, and, and that may be true. But I found out this, the governor is only 48 years old. She's younger than me. With all this responsibility, all of the problems, all of this, that she has to think about every single day. I know she's not sleeping. I know she has a, a children and a husband. I know she has family members and all of those things as well, like all of us do. And on top of those responsibilities, she has to deal with 10 million different personalities in the state of Michigan. Exactly. 10 million. So she's doing the best she can. And even if she's not doing the best she can, she's doing more than I could do. So we really should stop criticizing. I see a lot of criticism about this. That, and, and some of it, a lot of it can be true. But this is not the season, for, especially not for the church. Now, the secular world, they can do what they want, say what they want, but not for the church. It's for, this is a season for us to pray, to, to seek wise counsel, and to be th and to think more of others than we just thinking of ourselves. I'm going to read that again because that was powerful. I'll read it to you. Nothing limits intelligence more than ignorance. Nothing fosters ignorance more than one's own opinions. And nothing strengthens opinions more than refusing to look at reality. That's powerful. That's just powerful to me. Because what's limiting your intelligence is your ignorance. Yeah. And, though, and that ignorance has consequences to it. See, it's all right to rip and run and do all of that when it doesn't affect your family, when it doesn't affect you uh, directly. But when it starts affecting you directly, when you lose a loved one, and you can't go to the funeral and they are only allowing five people to go in and you can't say goodbye and you can't go to the hospital and you can't. Then the whole program changes then. But if we'd have just stayed at home and and, and been obedient and, and, and the thing about it is it's amazing. People don't like to take orders. We just love to give them. We'll give orders. We won't. We'll tell somebody what they should do, how they should do. No. Sit down somewhere. That's what we need to do. I'm feeling it tonight. I'm trying to go slow. I'm trying to ease into it. I'm trying to ease into it. Don't want to go. Don't want to take. Don't want to go too fast. Write this down too, sisters and brothers. Don't ruin a good day by thinking about a bad yesterday. Let it go. Yesterday is over with. You, you can't go back. You can't fix it. Nothing, it's done. Don't ruin a good day by thinking about a bad day, a bad yesterday. This is a, this a good day. Whatever I didn't do yesterday, it, it, that's yesterday. I'm moving forward in today. That's what, that's what all of us have to do. Be thankful for the time you have right now. Amen. Remember I was saying choice remember I was saying choices and consequences. And I was thinking today, you know, and this is a plug for my brother, Dr. Paul Turner Jr. He has an agency called the Choice Agency. It's a domestic violence anger management company, a behavioral management company. And I used to partner with him. And we I wanted to give some information too, not just from the biblical uh not just from a biblical perspective, but a lot of us, uh, a lot of domestic violence and things in that matter are going up. And so I just want to hit on that just for a few moments. Uh, choices. When I choose to slap him, her, or the children, because they on my nerves. I'm going to say it again. When I slap him, slap her, slap the children. That's domestic violence, anger management, conviction, which is you can get one year probation, but you have to do 26 
to 52 weeks of domestic violence classes or 12 to 18 weeks of anger management counseling. Choices. I choose to curse, intimidate, or assault someone in the family or employer, etc. Consequence, jail time, discharge from your job, or fired from your job. And that's just from cursing and being in, intimidated. Intimidating. So you got to be careful. I know some of you are under a lot of stress. I'm just trying to let you know what your consequences by not thinking, by not taking a deep breath, by not stepping back, by not allowing God to have control over you and you lose control, consequences. I choose to break the law. I choose not to do what the governor said. Incarceration. Yeah, you can go to jail for this. And there's a lot of brothers in prison. If they're in prison right now, because of whatever their situation was, and now the disease is in the, in the prison system. So, so you got to be careful. How how you feeling? And yes, I I know we're saying well, that's for some people, depending on your skin color and this, that, and the other. Yes, that may be true to an extent, but that ain't true for everything. And I wouldn't test it. You know what to do. And I and I don't govern my life by what others don't do or the punishment they don't get or what should happen. I govern my life by what God says for me to do. And that's what you need to do. That's what we all need to do. Because it's easy to look at the television, social media, and get angry over injustices in this country. But that's been going on since we've been here. That is nothing new. And for us to, to, to think that just because we, we shall overcome, that we have a few dollars in the bank, can drive a car, and all of these things, and don't think that there's discrimination, you better wake up. And, and I'm not even worried about that because I have to think that my God gave me the spirit to understand when to move, when not to move, when to go, when not to go. I've even put that in my children. That's what me and the wife had to do because raising men, African-American men, Black men, Ethiopian men, whatever you want, men of color, their their precautions. We shouldn't have to take it, but the reality of it is we have to take it. We have to take those type of precautions in these in these days. So consequences, choices. The Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. I'm going to say it this way. The day you hear my voice, don't have a hard head. Listen to what I'm saying to you tonight. This is a season to be still. To be still. And know that God is God. I choose to break the law. Incarceration. I choose to gamble or use drugs and alcohol. That's pathological behavior, addiction, alcoholism, which leads to jail, which leads to domestic violence. All of these things, it, it leads to that. And I'm here tonight to tell you the consequences of our behavior. You can be mad for 10 minutes that change your life for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So those brothers that's, that's in the house and, and they get up, you're getting mad and things like that, take a deep breath, go outside, walk around the corner, come back, sit down. Sisters, same way. When you get angry, things are not going the way you want it to go, this, that, and the other. I'm asking you to, to, to take a deep breath. Calm down. Your life is, is worth more than going to the gas station, getting a cigarette, hanging out at the park. Your, your life is worth it's worth more. I choose to do nothing. 
I choose to be nothing. I chose to do nothing. I cho I choose to be nothing. If you don't, this is the time to reevaluate your life and do something with it. Because if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. Now, if you like that, keep doing it. But if you want something different, I'm talking to believers, non-believers, whoever's listening to me tonight. Your life can change, but you have to be that change agent. You have to be the one to say, you know what? I'm turning around. I'm doing something different. I'm tired of being the way I've been. I'm tired of hanging with the same old people. I'm tired of always going to church saying, amen, praise the Lord, thank you, Lord, and then going back to being that old Joe I was before I went into the church. We all can put on that mask. We all. Can. The thing about it is we've been wearing it so long, we don't even know how to take it off. But in this season, in this season, we have the opportunity to do what? Get ourselves in order. To hear God to realize there's consequences to our actions and to understand I don't want to keep bumping my head against the wall because the knot is only going to get bigger. The knot on my head is only going to get bigger. Amen. And let me just say at this juncture of teaching tonight, write this down. I'm going to say this real slow. The past is where you learn the lesson. The future is where you apply the lesson. I'm going to say that again. That's for us slow saints. We got to let that process in our minds. So. The past is where you learned the lesson. The future is where you apply the lesson. There's some things you have to apply. Dr. Peters said this. This is, this is not my quote. This is Dr. Robbie Peters. He came here, did a great teaching with us a few years ago, and I'm a note taker. So, I, so I'm so i going to give him props. I'm going to give him all props. Wherever, with all the, the quotes that he said, when I say it, I'm going to let you know this. Dr. Peters said this. There's a time to learn the lesson, and then there's a time to, to put the lesson that you learned into action. And some of us keep doing the same things over and over and over and over again, expecting a different outcome. And I'm here to tell you that's called insanity. Choices and consequences is the theme tonight. And I've been reading out of the book of Deuteronomy about the Israelites leaving from Egypt to the promised land. And knowing that in that particular text also if we read read the, the the story about the israelites leaving egypt to the promised land should not have taken them 40 years to get there but the, what the problem was they didn't trust god so i'm asking you tonight what's your wilderness and why is it taking you so long to get to that promised land that god said he had for you why are you, why are you just going in circles this is a song, you got me going in circles. Yeah, I got myself going in circle though. Round and round I go. Because I'm tripped out over myself. Yep, I ain't strung out over nobody else. I'm tripped out over myself. I can't get out of my own way. And so God has put us in this time, in this frame, this time frame to do what? It's a song that the old folks, the old saints used to sing at the church said, get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross where he shed his blood. Get right with God. It's time for us to get right with God. And he'll show you how. Ah, he's showing us through all of the, the 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 situations and 
and circumstances and letting us see what's going on throughout the world. This is a teachable time for us to look and learn, to see what's going on in our community, in our state, in our country, in the world. All of us has an opportunity right now to change some things in our lives. And I'm here to give you the good news. It's not too late. I don't care how old you are. As long as he wakes you up in the morning, you got another chance. You lay down at night. You didn't, you didn't quite make the mark. You wake up the next day. He didn't get, he's giving you another chance. So be thankful for the chances that God keeps giving you to do what? To get yourself together, to be kingdom minded, not church. It's a whole lot of church folks, but to be kingdom minded, to be spiritually minded to be able to come out of yourself, to be able to hear God when he speaks, when he talks to you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Take some time, spend time with him. Stop spending time on television, on social media, on all these other outlets. Spend some time with the God that woke you up this morning, the one that allows you to take the breaths in and breathe out, the one that allows you to... to, to, Uh, Don't take it for granted. Pick up the phone. Call your sister. Call your brother. Call call the one that you ain't talked to in 20 years because y'all both was mad over who got the biggest sandwich uh, 10 years ago and we ain't spoke since. Pick up the phone because tomorrow they may not be here. They may not be here. And and I want you to understand this too. Some of your friends are just enemies you haven't had an argument with yet. Yeah. Some people you think is your friend ain't your friend. And some of the very folks you think don't care about you are praying for you right now. So be be careful who you say, my friend, my this, my that, my they don't you don't Take some time to design. Try the spirit and see if it be of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Because everyone that say they love you don't love you. And everyone you think that has an ought against you don't. And some of us just can't accept truth. And we've said, no, they don't like me. No, they just told you the truth. And you didn't want to accept it. So you said, oh, they don't like me. They don't have my best interest. Yes, they do. You just got to be able to discern it. This is the season of of discerning people. What's the motive behind it? And a man's gift determines what he can see. Did you hear what I just said? A man's gift determines what he can see. It's a lot of folks that have poor vision. I didn't say poor. I said poor. Poor vision. Can't see nothing. Right in front of their face. Can't see it. You know why? Because they don't have no gifts. All they have is mouth. God gives you the gift of discernment. To be able to see things beyond your physical sight. Because as I, like I've said this in the past. There's a difference between sight and vision. A lot of people have sight, but few have vision. Consequences, circumstances, choices. That's the topic for tonight. I hope you all staying with me. I hope you're staying with me. Listen, there will always be a better way to do something. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy life the way it is right now. What are you saying? Yes, there's a lot of things I would like to be doing right now. But I'm not going to get depressed because I can't do it. I'm thankful for what I can do. I'm thankful that I can still get up in the morning. I'm glad I can hug my wife, hug my son, call my mother, call my father. 
And there's a lot of things I can do. So why don't I put my mind there instead of what I can't do? Because every time I put my mind on things that I can't do, I fall into something called depression. On my Zoom call Saturday afternoon with my with Victory Word members, I'm going to discuss that. How do we deal with the with the with the pressure of depression and how do we deal with it from a biblical perspective? How do we how how do we handle that in this time? It's easy to say God is going to fix it, but how is He going to do it? Well, on my Zoom call this coming Saturday, I'm going to address that this Saturday. So. What's the cure? Catch yourself before you fall into the trap of insisting that things should be different from how they are. Stop and remind yourself that in the absence of your judgment, everything will work out just fine. Stop judging everything. In all things, God's works for the good of those who love him. Do you love God? Then he's working for you. He's working for you. If you love him, I didn't say loving the way you want to. I said, do you love God? Because a lot of folks say they love God. They say a lot of things. A lot of folks said a whole bunch back in biblical times. But forget that part. We we, we got a record on biblical. There's a lot of things that you said that you was going to do and didn't do. There's a lot of things I said, same thing. The question I'm asking you right now is, do you love God? And all things. Things God works for the good of those who love him. Are you getting it? God is in control. It's okay for you to let go. Instead of focusing on the negative, think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. In other words, make some choices. When I choose to be happy, the consequence of me choosing to be happy is me not being so sad. And not only when I choose to be happy, then that means that I change even the the chemical reactions in my body changes when my mind is in a happy place. And and that's scientifically proven. When you smile, the the different endorphins that's in your body, the the chemical reactions that change in your body as a result of you being happy. Now, I'm not saying you got to smile and do that all the time. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that you have to make a conscious choice in this season. And with everything that's going on right now, you have to make a conscious effort every day to get up out the bed and say, Lord, I thank you. Yes, I do, Lord. I thank you for my lying down last night, my rising up this morning, Lord. I thank you, even though I got a few pains in my body. I done picked up a few extra pounds. I have not eaten the way I should. But, Lord, I thank you in spite of me. I'm thankful for what you've done for me. Do I have any witnesses tonight that can praise God and say, Lord, I thank you for what you what already done, not what you're going to do, God, but what you've already done this day for For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice. Michael, Michael's going to rejoice and be glad in this because there's one thing the devil can't do. He can't make a day. He can't make a day, y'all. He might try to interrupt your day. He might try to upset your day. He might even make you cry during the day. But I'm here to tell you, only God can make a day. And so I'm thankful because it's another good day. It's another good day to have a God day. I love you to life and Christ Jesus loves you all the more. You have to speak it into the atmosphere because some days you don't feel it. But that's all right. You don't have to feel it. Just know it. The old saints, they prayed when they felt like it, when they didn't feel like it. They went, they, they, they interceded on good days. And when they had bad days or whatever you want to call their day, they still was there praising their God. That's what we have to do in this season, y'all. We have to do the same thing. When you do, you'll begin to discover how wonderful life is. Think about the things that are good. Think about the good things in life, the good things that's going on. Everything ain't bad. 
I've had bad moments, but I, I'm trying not to have bad days. That's something you got to work at. It just don't happen overnight. You get a call, someone in pass, somebody lost a job, somebody going through whatever it is. Some people going through hell right now. And I'm talking about on the outside, they look like everything is fine. But in their mind, in their mind, they're going through. That's why it's important for us to pray for one another, to check on one another. Because everybody that you hear say, how you doing? And they say, I'm fine, ain't fine. You hear me? Holler if you hear me tonight. And this one right here, this is something you need to put on your refrigerator. Write this down. Talking about choices. Sometimes you have to forgive those who don't even care they hurt you. I'm going to let that sit in for a second. I got to take it. I got to. I had to drink some living water behind that statement. I'll say it again. Sometimes you have to forgive those who don't even care they hurt you. And you you know of some folks that hurt your feelings, hurt you, did you wrong, and they then kept going and thought no more about it. And you got to forgive them too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the consequences of you not forgiving is for all that weight to be on you. Aren't you tired of carrying other people's weight? Let them carry their own weight. Don't you carry your weight and theirs? Because that's what will depress you. You trying to figure out why you feel the way you feel because you're carrying your weight and theirs too. Realize that people view and analyze things from the level of their understanding. I'll say that again. Realize that people view and analyze things from their level of understanding. Some folks you arguing with don't even understand they in a fight. So the fight ain't even fair. You're doing all the fighting and they don't even know they're getting beat down because their level of understanding. You know, everybody don't understand. So, so you have to, like I said earlier, have discernment. You got to be able to discern what's going on with people. And you don't have to always have the last word. Just have the last prayer in your heart. Pray without ceasing. Because some folks just don't get it. If you wrote it out with crayons, they just don't get it. So you have to understand where people are. You have to understand where you are. And you have to understand this. You don't have to have the last word. I don't have to. Look, 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 y'all. You don't have to argue with people. Let them be who they are, and you stay who you are. Allow them to be, as long as they don't touch you, don't come in your space, because at the end of the day, I choose peace. Did you hear what I said? I choose peace over problems. Yeah. There ain't no problem if, I, if I'm peaceful. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, that's why I'm not dealing with the, this president. I want to stay peaceful. And listening to his foolishness will get me off my square. So what I do is I pray for him and his family and the ones that surround him. Because the Bible tells us to pray for our leaders. And that's spiritual leaders and civic leaders. I don't have to agree with them, and I don't. But I know one thing. The body needs to pray. The body of Christ needs to be in a prayer posture right now in this season. And there's a whole lot of people out here 
has been doing a whole lot of playing, not praying, playing, playing church. And now we don't have a building to run to. Now we got to rely on that God that's in us, that word that's in us. Now we got to pick up the book. We got to read it and we got to realize that there's revelation in it. So even through this season of storms, I'm still peaceful navigating through the storm. I don't say I didn't say I don't have my moments. And I, I take a deep breath and get myself back together because I know this too shall pass. There's been storms ever since the, the, the world was. There's been storms since Noah's day up until today. And there'll be storms tomorrow. The question is, how will I react in them? My choices will decide my consequences. I'll say that again. My choices will decide my consequences. So if I choose to be peaceful, the only thing, the consequences of, of being peaceful is to be, is having a sound mind. I want to have a sound mind. You ought to want to have a sound mind. Amen. It's going to hurt somebody right here. It's going to hurt somebody, but it's the truth. You ready for it? Because I'm ready to give it. If you're ready for it, get your pens ready. You ready to write this down? I'm ready to give it to you. One of the most dangerous places. Did you hear what I just said? One of the most dangerous places you can be in is your feelings. I'm going to say that real slow. One of the most dangerous places you can be in is your feelings. I didn't come up with that. I can't even remember where I got that from. But I'm not taking credit for it, but I did write it down. Because one of the most dangerous places I can be is in my feelings. And a lot of us have been in our feelings, which made us make the wrong choice in the first place. And now we're dealing with those consequences of being in our feelings. Ain't it something that we can see Somebody else making a mistake and tell them how they should fix this and do this and do that and do the other. And we made that same mistake five years ago. And, and we couldn't hear it when somebody was telling us. And so we got an attitude when we tell it to somebody else and they don't hear us. Woo Dangerous place to be in your feelings. Especially being in your feelings and wrong. Because a lot of us can't take someone else correcting us. I have a hard time taking correction from Lady T. I just do. I admit it. Because I'm not wrong that, that I'm not wrong that often. <laughs> just thought I'd put a little joke in there. But it's hard for me to take correction. I'm doing better with it. Because at least I can acknowledge it. And I acknowledge it on Facebook to other people. And you can come back and see this later on. You can rewind and say, yeah, pastor said that he can't. But I'm doing better at it. What all I'm saying is, sisters and brothers, is that we have to be able to take corrective criticism from those who love us, from those who are over us, and even sometimes from those who don't even care nothing about us, but they're telling the truth. Because truth is just truth. It doesn't matter if it's coming from someone I like to hear it from or someone I can't stand. The truth is still the truth. The question is, what am I going to do with it? And not only what am I going to do with it, but am I going to 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 take it in to let it change me? Ask yourself that question. Can you take corrective criticism? I want you to know this too. Some people are sent by the devil. It's not a divine connection. You know, we, we so into this divine connection. Oh, I'm connecting them. No, some people are sent by the devil. I'm not going to say the devil, but by the enemy. You call him what you want. 
be careful of the inquiring demon. Now, this this for us baptized believers in Christ. This, this for us right here. Listen, be careful of the inquiring demon, one that really wants information about you, but will pretend that it wants to be your friend. Somebody share this word and say, Satan, I see you. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Watch that inquiring demon, the one that really wants information about you, but will pretend that it wants to be your friend. All, all they want is information. They don't want to be your friend. You, you watch that. Somebody share that. You you hit the share button and say, Pastor is telling the truth. And I'm just telling you, tell the enemy, I, I see you. I see you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I, I, I see you. I, I see you. Yeah. Yep, the, the enemy tries to get close to you so he can help you make the wrong choices. Because one thing I was taught when I was a child, this is two things the devil says. You got plenty of time and oh, oh, it's too late. You got plenty of time and oops, you done ran out of time. You don't want to run out of time, sisters and brothers. And God has slowed us down some so we can do some self-inventory on ourselves. So we can can so we can restart, recalibrate, you know, re rethink some things, you know. Uh, take some inventory, do some soul searching. I'm here to tell you it's not too late, whatever it is, whatever the enemy said, no, you can't do this. Oh, no, no, no. It's not too late. It's not too late to start that business. It's not too late to go back to school. It's not too late to start uh, 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 exercising. It's not too late to start eating correctly. It's not too late. You didn't get too old. To get you, you ain't too old not to have a man or a woman or a husband or a wife or whatever it is. A dog, a cat, you ain't too old. You're not, time has not passed you by. You still got an opportunity to live, to enjoy whatever stage of life you're in. If you're, if you're in your, if you're in the spring of your life, good for you. If you in the, if you in the, the, the fall of your life, look, it's not too late. And even if you're in your winter season, because seasons change. It's not too late. I'm here to tell you tonight, as the Bible, as God was telling the Israelites, you choose this day who you'll serve. There's consequences. But guess what? There's blessings as well. And with every blessing, there's an attached burden to it. So be careful what you ask God for. Because you guess what? You might just get it. And then when you get it, what you going to do with it? So tonight, I, I pray that you've, that I said something that touched your heart, your spirit. Uh, if this has been a blessing to you tonight, uh, and you like to sow a seed or give an offering, I like to say give an offering, because sowing seeds and things like that, that was in biblical times, and it was used in uh, actual seeds. It was in a parable state uh, said in parables for folks to understand. In this season, we give uh, our finances. And so if this ministry has been a blessing to you, you can cash app us, cash app us. It's on the screen. If you'd like to give a donation, just follow what the screen is saying. Um, I'm not here to, 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 to make you shout, jump, None of that. That's God's. If if it does, if that if that uh, ignites you, I'm glad. But what I want to give you is revelation and insight on yourself, who you are, and whose you are, and to know that there's more good days ahead. And don't listen to everybody's report. Everybody's not on your level. Everybody doesn't understand kingdom minded people. And just because they don't understand them, stand us, don't, don't look down on them, pray for them and keep it moving. Today is Wednesday night. 
when we lay down tonight, have a good thought on your mind. Pray for somebody else besides yourself. And ask God for his love and his grace to wake you up in the morning so we can do it all over again. Do what? Praise and worship him. I worship and praise him every day. Every day. In some form or fashion. If it's nothing more but saying, Lord, I thank you. I stretch my hands to you, Lord. When you stretch your hands, that's what you, what you're saying is that I, I surrender. I, I surrender. I surrender unto something that's higher than me, which is God. And I want you to get into an intimate relationship with your God, with our Father. Intimacy is being able to talk to Him. Intimacy to to into me I see to see the inside of me. For for him to see, he already knows me. But the question is, am I willing to to release all that I have in order for me to receive what he has for me? That's what I want. I want, what do you want, Pastor? I want everything that I'm supposed to have. Whatever it is I'm supposed to have, Lord, that's what I want. All of it. Every, every, Every bit of it. I want mine. Whatever it is, I want what God has for me, and you should want what God has for you. But remember, there's consequences to your choices, good, bad, or indifferent. Let's take this time in this season to to weigh it out, to see the balance. And if you can't get past your own emotions and your own feelings, then you need to pray. And ask God to let me come out of myself to see the greater good that you have for me. Because I want to say, as I believe it was Jacob, one of one of the most Old Testament uh, saints. <coughs> Excuse me. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah, when you serve the Lord and put it in his hands. He just makes things better. If you want life to be better, turn it over to the Lord and let him work it out. Well, that's my time for the night, Victory Word. I love you. I look forward to talking to you in our Zoom meeting this coming Saturday. Uh, And if you'd like to be a part of our Zoom meeting, um, talking about health issues and depression, um, just send me a text or send a text personally to me. and. and we'll send you the ID uh, code for you to first you got to have the zoom app, the zoom app. You have to download zoom and, and, and follow those instructions. And then all you have to do is put in our ID that I would give you at a later time. So we just thank you for, for being with us tonight and victory word. What, you know, we're living our future now and there's victory in the word. Let us pray before we close out. Most gracious Father, I thank you tonight for this time that you allowed your people to come together through the social media. Father, we thank you for our lying down, our rising up. We thank you for this session tonight. Father, I ask that you protect those that may be going to work still and out, out in the in the workforce that has to leave their home. And Father, we need for you to be protection for them. Some may be going to work tonight, Lord. Some may be going in the morning. Whatever their shift is, Father, I'm asking you to shift the atmosphere. Allow them to be in safe quarters. Allow them to to do their job and have peace while they're doing their job, God. Let them have, let them know that you won't leave them nor forsake them in this hour. Father, we just thank you and we praise you and we magnify your name. Father, I ask you to bring, give strength to our governor. Strengthen her and her team. Allow her to make the decisions necessary for your people. Lord, all of your people, let her make that decision, Father. Spiritually, I ask you to touch her, her family, Lord, all of those that's working with her, everyone that's working with the mayor, Father, touch him as he works in the in the in our, our chief of police and all of those that's working for the greater good of your people, this community, this state, and this country. Father, I pray for our president and his staff, Lord. I ask that you have mercy on him, Lord. Just have mercy, Father, but take care of his family as well, Lord. 
We just ask you as the victory word, as your fa as the victory word family, Lord, to protect each and every one that's under the sound of my voice and everyone that is connected to us, Lord. I ask you to 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 go out and make crooked places straight. Lord, lead, guide, and direct us. Keep us. That is our prayer tonight, Father. And it is so. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. I'll see you soon. God bless you. And remember, we are living our future now. God bless you.